If you're visiting for the first time, we've been going over Psalm 91 and taking a look at the promises of God for those that dwell in the shelter of God. And these promises when you're walking with God are pretty powerful. There's the promise of God being your refuge, a place that you can run to in time of trouble. There's, there's a promise that God is your protector, that he will put a guard over you. There is a promise that he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, meaning he will deliver you from sin or temptation. And these promises go on and on, and they're so powerful. And I think the challenge of the temptation is to not trust these promises of God. This morning, we're going to see another promise, which I have to be honest, that many people probably don't talk about because we're not certain about. And this is the promise of God sending his angels, listen, sending his angels to guard us. Listen to what the scripture says. We're going to have to deal with this scripture and what it says. It says this, verse 11, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands, they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent, you will trample under foot. Isn't that amazing that the scripture says that he will send his angels to guard us in all his ways, in all our ways. Let's pray together. Father, as we think about this scripture, we just sang the song about trusting in you. But Father, do we trust in you that these promises are true for us and are not just in the pages of Scripture, are not just in the phrases of a song, but God, these are promises from God the Almighty. And Lord, this morning, I just pray that we can look at your Scripture and what your Scripture says about these angels guarding us. And God, it's, 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 it's amazing to even think that even in this moment, that there are angels in this place. And for some, that can sound a little bit wacky or out there, but if the scripture is true, and we believe it is from Genesis to Revelation, this is true, Father. And God, we thank you for that. I ask you to be with the people in this room that need comforting today, that need guidance, that need hope, that need encouragement. Would you be with us, Father? It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. We've been going over these different promises of God, and, and Psalm 91 has 16 verses. We've seen so far up to these 10 verses of who God says he is, and then he gets to this part about the angels, that the angels will guard us and protect us. This is a messianic psalm, by the way, speaking of Jesus, but nonetheless, the biblical principles are true. Okay, I want you to think about that. When you, when you think about angels guarding us or angels protecting us, or you ever thought about angels in this room right now? Does that freak you out a little bit? Does that scare you to think that even when you cannot see that angels are fighting for you? That, that even when your eyes are closed at night that there are angels fighting against the evil forces of this darkness that you cannot see that it's happening? I was uh, 20, about 23 years old. I was coming back from playing golf and I'm horrible at golf. Should have never gone to play golf. But I was coming back from playing golf and I was in Houston, Texas, where I'm from, and I was on the freeway. And I was in Houston, uh, they do things bigger and faster. And um, we were going 75 on the freeway, which is the legal speed limit. And then all of a sudden, the freeway, there's construction happening. And so I slow down for the construction. Well, a 15 passenger van going 75 didn't recognize that the cars were coming to a stop. So it hit me in the back and I had a Jeep Cherokee, and, it, and it, it squished the back of the Jeep, smashed it all the way to the front of my seat, and shot my car forward. Um, the next thing I know was somebody was pulling me out of the car. I was, I was knocked out. My shoes were off my feet. That's how hard the impact was. I was put on a stretcher. I was bleeding from the back of my head. So have you ever seen the scars in the back of my head? That's what it's from. And so I'm at the hospital in a stretcher and can't move. They don't want to move my neck. And so I'm sitting there for a long time. 
pastors from the church come in and they just say, they say this phrase, and at this point I was somewhat of a new Christian. They said something to the extent of, man, God had his angels watching over you. And I didn't really know what that meant. I didn't really know what that meant because I was thinking this. I was thinking at that point of 22, I was like, well, if he had his angels watching over me, why did that even happen? But as I matured, the scars on my head now represent not what happened, but what could have happened. And I've matured and recognized that it's much like we can say things about God that, well, if God, why did this happen? Well, if God, will this happen? Um, it's not that we are gonna be completely harm free from the things of this world. It's kind of like uh, putting a seatbelt on every time. It's not always gonna protect you 100%, but you put it on every time. It, it's very similar to, you know, I don't know how the angels come and how they, how they protect us or when they do and when they don't, but nonetheless, that time I look at it as, man, was that an angelic moment for me? You know, I was, uh, several weeks ago, I had the honor of speaking at a first responder breakfast at GCU. And there were hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of first responders here. And I was looking at the first responders as I got up on stage, there were hundreds of them. And, and that phrase comes to mind when you think about a first responder, to serve and to protect. And I got up there and I just, I just thought about this. Some of them were with their families and I just thought about like, man, um, I am so grateful for the many that put their lives out on the line and who sacrifice so much from their families, who they miss birthdays, they miss Christmas stuff. They, they have to be on all the time to serve and to protect so that we may have peace, so that when, and here's what I told them, so that when we sleep at night, we can have peace that somebody is protecting us. And in fact, we have several first responders at our church who are part of a small group, and I think several are right over here. I want to say thank you for your service. Thank you for your sacrifice. I know your, your family sacrificed a lot as well. But this is the role of the angels in Scripture. The role of the angels in Scripture is to serve and to protect. You know, Scripture talks about angels over 300 times. From Genesis to Revelation, you may ask, what are the angels doing? From Genesis, you see them on behalf of God sending messages. You see them in Isaiah 6, they're praise and worshiping God. Daniel chapter 6, they close the mouth of the lion to protect God's people. In 2 Kings chapter 19, they carry out judgment on behalf of God. Luke chapter 2, they're there at the birth of Jesus. Matthew chapter 13 shows that they will be there at the final judgment. Matthew 28 shows that they're powerful enough to roll away the stone. In Revelation, uh, the angel Michael fights off evil spirits and, and uh, Satan. So you see from Genesis, Genesis to Revelation that these angels are active, that there are things going on, although we cannot see, they are playing a role to serve and to protect. Over 300 times the scripture talks about that. So let me ask you a question. When I talk about angels protecting us, what comes to mind to you? What comes to mind? When you hear that word angel, there's this misconception that's not true in scripture. We often think that when our loved ones pass away, they become angels. However, that's nowhere to be found in scripture. The closest thing you see in scripture is that they say, uh, scripture says that they become like angels, but uh, when people pass away, they don't get angel wings. So when you think about angels, we also don't have, you've heard people say, which is also false, that every person will have its own guardian angel. That is nowhere to be found in scripture either. When you think of, of angels, when I think of angels, here's part we think about. Look at this first picture, right? So let me ask you this. Leave this picture here. Psalm 91 is also known as this soldier's psalm. I believe it's World War II, they, they, would, they would pray this psalm over and over and over for protection. Psalm 91, God protect us, God protect us. Send your angels to protect us, God. So let me ask you this. If you are in a situation where you desperately need spiritual warfare to be fought on your behalf, if you need, like, I need someone to go to battle for me. No, you know what? You st I got it. You stay there. I got this on my own. Right? But let's be honest. We, we kind of picture, and here's the danger, is that we have, we have gotten our theology off of pictures. 
that we have gotten this, this doctrine who we believe God is and angels off of pictures. Man-made pictures that are meant to help us to have a comprehension, but that doesn't say, I got your back, I'm coming to battle. <laughs> the next one, you might, let's get, okay, you might see this. You might see this one. You might say, okay, you know what? That's not what I pictured, Pastor. I pictured more of this, an adult angel coming to protect. Now, this one, this one right here, you may say, you know what? I've just pictured this, this light. I really don't know that I pictured this brightness. What if I told you when God commands his angels to protect you, when God commands his angels to go to war for you and go to battle for you, that it may look a little more like this instead? See, I don't know what's happened with Christianity over time, but we've made God really soft. We forget he is this mighty, powerful God. Is he gentle? Yes, but he's, he's bad. But that's my God. That's my God, right? And so we, 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 we forget though. It's like, it's like we have forgotten who our God is and how powerful he is and what he can do and what he is in charge over. And as Christians, we forget and we look at what's happening in the culture and we fold in the fetal positions like, well, I just don't know how it's going to happen. But it's because he is God. And when he commands his angels, so I want you, now what about this next picture? What if, what if when you read the scripture, it's like, I'm gonna come, now I don't know, don't take your theology from this either. Please don't be like, yeah, pastor said this is the angel. No, I don't know. But, but I'll tell you this, that when the scripture tells us he will command his angels, I am not gonna picture a baby with a harp. I'm just telling you, I am going to picture. You have to understand that in our culture today, in our world today, there are unseen demonic evil principalities in this world. Let me ask you something. How do demonic powers, and it's weird, I've been on this, this thing of recognizing the evilness more and more every day and how evilness begins to work because we can't turn a blind eye to that. You have to recognize that there's actual evil powers that are working against us. It's not coincidence that there's evilness. And these, these, the, the evilness has been working since Genesis. It just takes on different faces depending on the culture. And so uh, when you look at the, this Psalm, Psalm 91, now I'm going to read this and you're probably gonna view it differently. Watch this. Psalm 91 says, for he will command, watch this, this is a command from God Almighty. I want you to picture this, like God is like a football coach almost, and I hate to bring him down to a football coach, but for the sake of comprehending, he's like, he's bringing in the angels like a football coach, and he's not one of these football coaches that he's like, hey guys, I just want you to be nice, but go, no, I picture like God saying, hey, come here, come here. There are evil forces, and here's what you have to know too, um, the, the way demonic uh, forces work is that um, Satan, Lucifer, took a third of the angels with him is what scripture tells us. And uh, I'm not a math teacher, uh, but that means that we have the advantage for having two thirds of the angels, right? And so we make it out as if Satan just, he's way beyond us, but no, he only has a third of the angels, which means they are demonic unseen spirits that work. The way the demonic unseen spirits work, uh, they work through people and through things. So you have to understand that uh, the demonic spirit is looking for a vehicle to drive and it drives the vehicle that has no spiritual driver. So if the Holy Spirit is not uh, governing your soul and you have not surrendered your life to Christ, you are a candidate for a demonic spirit to reside in you. you have to, yeah, that's Bible teaching. You have to know that. And so therefore you, you wonder how, listen, you wonder why, how does such evilness happen in the world? How does such demonic stuff happen in the world today? How does, and you ask these questions and you see the faces on the people on the news, but a demonic spirit has influenced them. You have to understand that, that there is this, um, who, who, what else uh, has, the, um, has the mentality to murder what a demonic spirit does? 
And so this is what is going on. So there's a third of the angels that work for Satan in this demonic realm that have influence over our culture. So now I want you to picture that they're over there causing mayhem. They are causing murder. They are causing all kinds of stuff in our culture. So God brings his angels in and says, listen, here is the plan. I am commanding you, which means the angel has to do it when God commands. Over 300 times in Scripture we see this. God commands. So you look now, the angels coming together, not the one with the heart, picture the other one, saying, tell me where to go, tell me what to do, God. So this is what he commands them to do. So number one, if you're taking notes, what do the angels do? They serve God. Over 300 times when they're speaking on behalf of God, when they are praising God, when they are shutting the mouth of lions in Daniel 6, For God, they are serving God. They do what God tells them to do. But you have to understand something. I don't know how God exactly works in all this, to be honest with you, but here is the promise. The promise is all throughout Psalm 91. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, you can take this as a promise. So if you are here today and you are serving God and you're seeking him and you're hungry for him, you can have confidence that God is looking over you. If, if you are saying, I will come to church for during the week, I'm gonna do and live however I want to live. I would tell you, I probably wouldn't be very confident of the covering that I have from God. So it is important that you don't live the way you want to live Monday through Saturday, come to church on Sunday and expect covering and wonder why life is hell Monday through Saturday. It's, it's amazing how we get ourselves into our own situations, we face natural consequences, and we blame it on God. And so what I'm telling you is, it's a safer place to, to make the Lord your dwelling place because of this. Then you can have confidence that if the Lord is your dwelling place, and I'll just tell you, I don't know when, I don't know how, all I know is what the Bible says. It says, for he will command when you make him your dwelling place. He will command. Think about these angels. Can you th- think about this for a minute? You. You ever thought about God commanding angels on your behalf? That not blow your mind? You know what I started praying? Parents, you know what I started praying for my kids? This is also very important. We are not to pray to angels. Do not pray to the angels. I know some uh, different denominations would teach to pray to angels. Do not. Revelation, John uh, gets a revelation from an angel. What does he do? He starts worshiping the angel. You remember that scripture in Revelation? What what does the angel say? Fool, get up. Don't worship me. He didn't say fool. That's my version. But he said, (laughs) but he tells him this. So so he's worshiping the angel and the angel, you can almost see. He's like, what what are you doing? You're going to get in trouble. What are you doing? Get up. Here's what the scripture says. He says, don't worship me. Worship God. So listen. Does God send angels? Yes. Can you ask God to send angels? You know what I do now in the mornings? Um, I ask God to put a guard of angels over my children. God, would you please? God, not the one with the harp. Send the the bad ones, God. Send the linebacker angels. Do you know what I mean? Praise God, football season is back. Life is better. So listen, you can do this. Do not pray and look for the angel to pray. Do not do that. You can go to God, though, according to this scripture, and say, God, I look at this father holding a sweet baby, and, and I, I just think about, yeah, it's you. You're looking around. I'm talking about you. <laughs> and I just think about, you know you can pray over your child and say, God, send every, every day, every day, God, send angels to protect this child. Guard, protect, God, please. And so the scripture is telling us that when you make God your dwelling place, he will, what, is, what does this word angels mean? City of angels. What is that? You should know this, David. Los Angeles. Angels, okay? This means messenger. This all, that's all that is. This is a messenger of God. The angels, uh, they send message. They protect they guard. So here's what he's saying. Command your angels, your messengers. These are supernatural, by the way. Command your angels concerning you to guard. What does this word guard means? Uh, it just means to protect, 
to watch over, even to go ahead. In the Hebrew, it is shamar. It means to tend to, almost as a parent would tend to a child. This is what the Hebrew, if you look up this word in the Hebrew, you will find the definition means shamar. It means that the angels look at you as if you are a sweet infant who desperately needs guidance and protection. Isn't that amazing? That the angels look at us and recognize that we do not even recognize the unseen demonic spirits that are out there. Therefore, I got you. Dwell with the Lord and I got you to guard you in all your ways, which means church, if God, there's a big if right here. If God is your dwelling place, as we have seen all throughout Scripture, then the Scripture says we can have confidence. Again, you're going to see this, how, why it's a messianic psalm speaking to Jesus, but we can claim the same thing. We can have confidence that he can command his angels to guard us, protect us, to treat us as if we are infants because we need his help. You in all of your ways, not just some of your ways, all of your ways, all of your ways. Then watch this. So you see here the angels, uh, they serve. And what is guard? They protect. They serve and they protect. Who commands them? God. They have taken an oath before God that they will serve and protect. Serve God, protect people who are dwelling in God. Then watch this. Verse 12, what he says about these angels, on their hands. Now listen to this. In Scripture, when you see this word hand uh, in, the, in the Old Testament, um, when you see the word hand, I think about the mighty hand of God. What does hand represent? Power. Hand represents power. When you see this word hand in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, it represents power and strength, the mighty hand of God. So this is what he's saying, that they will use, the angel will use its strength on their hands. So the angel comes with power now. This is why I gave you that visual. The angel comes with power to bear you up. What does this mean? When you can't keep going, the angel will help you keep going. It means that they will minister to you. Isn't that amazing? That God will send his angels to protect you and to minister to you. Watch this. So that you know how, um, don't raise your hand, but has anybody ever seen an angel? C can I share with you one time that I saw an angel? You're going to think, I'm, can, you, can I share with you one, just one time? It was during a moment where I was in a deep, 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 dark season of my life, I was questioning God's presence. I was questioning even the reality of God. What are you gonna do in my life? And I was just seeking him, God, seeking, 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 desperate, broken, lonely, lonely. And then she walked in and she's now my wife. I've seen an angel. I've seen an angel. I've seen an angel one time. Some of you single guys need to take notes right now, okay? <laughs> hey, look, I, I've, I've personally never seen an angel. Um, however, uh, there are stories upon stories upon stories about missionaries. It's amazing um, how God is God and needs no permission to be God. And if God wants to reveal himself in a dream, he can do it. If God wants to reveal himself to an angel, he can do it. Um, anytime you're wondering if it's God, you have to be sure it matches up to the character of God and the word of God. And so um, are these real? Are angels real? Yes. The scripture also tells us um, that we may have entertained angels and we may not have known it. Do you know that there are times, I I'm not kidding, there are times where I've been somewhere and, and this has happened and someone has asked me for money and um, there's sometimes, uh, if I have cash, I'll give. There's sometimes I won't. I just, you, you, just, you probably do the same thing. You just, you gotta feel that discernment from the spirit. And I know some people are like, we well, don't know what people are gonna do with the money. I I'm worried about my obedience to God more, more than the, what they're gonna do with the money. And, and so one particular time, um, someone asked for money and I was like, oh, no, and I kept walking. And the scripture came to mind. I'm not kidding. The scripture came to mind. It's like the spirit was saying, what if that was an angel you're supposed to entertain and you just said, no, thank you. So I said, okay, hey, come here real quick. <laughs> I did, I did. And, and, and I, I'm not saying to look at every person as their potential angel. I am saying uh, that you have to walk and dwell so closely with God that you can discern what's from God and what's not from God. 
and how God will work with these angels, I don't know. I don't know. But is it gonna stop me from praying, asking God to send these angels concerning? No, please, God. Protect me on the way to work. God, please protect me. And so then, watch this, it, it gets good because these angels just are not there um, uh, whenever, uh, you, you know, you are doing 100%, so then they come. But it says this, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Uh, some scholars would say that uh, this is when temptation comes in and you want to sin. You ever been there where temptation comes in, you want to sin? Now you're quiet, huh? <laughs> yeah, the answer is, look at your neighbor and say, yes, you, you want to sin. I am just joking, don't do that. That's your wife, don't do that. <laughs> Um, but, but look, so here, here's what it says. When we are, ten, watch this, this is amazing, and you're gonna question it, so I'm gonna back it up. Will God send the angels when there is temptation in your life? You ever thought about that? When there is temptation, will God send the angels to help you? I'm glad you asked the question. Matthew chapter four is known as the temptation of Jesus Christ. Watch this, where Satan, Satan tempts Jesus and he tempts him with the same stuff that he tempts us with. But I want you to listen to Matthew chapter four, verse five. Listen, because it's gonna be important for you because this may happen to you at some point in your life where Satan comes and, and but he comes to Jesus in the middle of temptation, which tells us that angels can come to us in the middle of, watch this. Then the devil took him, speaking of Jesus, to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, there's that if, there's that if, there's that if. If you are the son of God, trying to put a question mark on what God has already spoken. That's what the enemy always does, puts a question mark on what God has already spoken. So number one, the enemy puts a question mark on what God has already spoken. Genesis, did God really say? There's a question again, if you are the son of God, then he tells them to do something so that God will prove it. Watch this, throw yourself down for it is written. So he's telling Jesus, why don't you throw yourself off the temple, basically commit suicide and see if God will save you while you're trying to commit suicide. Let's just see. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. Now I also want to uh, show you something. In the Greek, it says what it says in the English. I want you to see that when Satan, watch this, this is so important, when Satan quotes scripture, he, does, he takes it out of context and doesn't quote the full thing. So watch this, look at our denominations that are built today, this prosperity gospel that's built off of picking and choosing and taking scripture out of context. Where was that birth from? The author of, of deceit, Satan. He will command his angels concerning you and he stops. He, he doesn't finish the scripture, but he, he, twists his, he twists it. And on their hands, they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. So now he is, what is Satan quoting? He's quoting Psalm 91 to Jesus. So I want you to understand something, that even the enemy knows scripture. So while you are on TikTok listening to these 30 second little snippets, you have to ask yourself, are you eating something that's taken out of context? And what is that doing for your soul? Because the enemy knows how to have a pretty voice. And so when he comes to Jesus, I'm sure, man, I, I, I'm confident that this wasn't this, hey, throw yourself. No, it's probably like, hey buddy, why don't you throw yourself? Come on, throw, he'll catch you. Just very deceitful, very soothing. He'll have you, he got you. You remember that scripture, right? Do it, do it. So he's using the scripture and Jesus said to him, he uses, watch this, how do you defeat the enemy? In your life today, the enemy is attacking you. He is putting stuff in your head. You are telling your stuff lie. You are believing lies, right? We all do this. And you are discouraged because you're believing lies. You're believing the lie that God's not gonna protect you. You're believing the lie that God doesn't see you. He doesn't love you. He can't use you, that he won't heal you, that he won't. You're believing these lies in your life today. How do you defeat the lies of the enemy? With the truth of God. Jesus said to him, Jesus quotes scripture back, except it's in the right context. Again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. What happens, watch this. Is Jesus being tempted? 
Is Jesus being tempted? Yes. This whole thing, this whole chapter is called the temptation of Jesus. Jesus fights against the temptation. He doesn't fall. And look at what happens because he is in the wilderness, which means in his humanity, he is tired. In in Jesus' humanity, he is tired. If you have been in a spiritual wilderness, you are tired and you are more apt to sin, right? You are more apt to sin when you are tired and you are tired of waiting on God. The enemy comes in to make you sin. But if you keep pressing through, look at verse 11. Then, oh, one of the sweetest words, get this on a coffee cup and take it to work. (laughs) And every time your boss comes to your office and walks out, take a drink. Then, (laughs) I'm I'm joking. I'm joking. Watch, this is good stuff. I'm joking, but watch, this is good stuff. We can take so much from this. Listen, this is good, good stuff. So, so here's, what I'm, here's what I'm talking about. So you are pursuing God. Yes, there's, just because you're pursuing God, it doesn't mean you won't have temptation. And it doesn't mean you won't even fall into temptation sometimes. But you're pursuing God. You're saying, God, I want you. I need you. I need to hear you. God, guard me, protect me. God, provide for me. God, and you're pursuing God and you're tired and you're weary. And look what the scripture says that he kept fighting. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and were ministering to Jesus. So what does this mean? That in the middle of our temptations, when you are exhausted, when you are crawling, when you are barely making it, that you can call out to God, you can call out to God concerning his angels, and they can, not part of their role is to minister to the people of God. Psalm 91, verse 12, they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. Then he closes with this, and I'm going to ask the band to come up as I close, and I want you to listen to these closing, this closing verse. Verse 11, he says, look, when you are dwelling with God, he will command this, this, this charge, this bold, this strong, this, these angels to come and fight on your behalf, to do work on your behalf that you will never even know they're doing. I cannot wait to get to heaven. I, I can almost guarantee you that there will be work that the angels have done on our behalf as Christians that you never even knew they did. Do you know that? There will be things that you didn't even know they did for you because God commanded them to do it for you. And the way you can be confident of that is to dwell in the arms of the Lord. That's where the protection and the safety and the commanding is coming from. So listen to this. Here is is the reward. 11, he commands the angels. Verse 12, they lift us up and minister. Verse 13, because they minister, this is speaking of Jesus, some would say messianic, but it's true for us. He says, you will tread on the lion. Uh, Who is seen as the lion in New Testament? The enemy is like a lion on the prowl, seeing who he can devour, right? So this is the enemy. So he is saying you will tread, which means victory. What? This is good. Please don't stop listening. This is good for your life. If you want victory, dwell in God. He can command his angels to give you strength. Then he will give you victory to tread on the lion, the enemy, and the adder. This is considered to be evilness that you cannot see, the unseen, the young lion, and the serpent. Who is seen as the serpent? Good job, class. Satan, watch this. You will trample under foot. Who did this? Jesus at the cross. So what you see, number one, Jesus withstanding temptation, defeated Satan on the cross. We can all celebrate because we know how this ends. Number two, because the Bible is still true today. And anytime you see a character of God, it doesn't change. The promises of God do not change. And if you leave it in its context, you can pull it out and say, what does this mean for us? So what this means for us today is that when you are dwelling, if You are dwelling in God and that you are living with God. You are pursuing God. You are trying your best. You will not be perfect, so let me free you up, but you are trying your best. You can have confidence that there is refuge, there is covering, and that God will command these mighty warrior of angels to guard you, to protect you, serve and protect in all your ways. On their hands, they will bear you up. They will minister to you. So here is the great news. And I'm closing. When I spoke to the first responders 
there were probably over a thousand. And, and I said this, I shared my gratitude. I said, I'm so grateful for your sacrifice. I'm so grateful that you took this oath to serve and protect. And then I said this because I mean it. I, I have taught my kids when they see those that have served our country or any first responders, I have taught them to go up to them and shake their hand and look them in the eye and say, thank you for your service. And, and, and because I, I think there are things that are unseen that we don't always see or things that we don't always know that happens. And so here's what I said to the hundreds of first, I said, hey, I want to personally thank you because I have four kids and I know that at night when my eyes are closed, your eyes are open. And here's the truth with this scripture, that when you dwell in the Lord, you can have confidence. When you dwell in the Lord, if you dwell in the Lord, you can have confidence that he will have and send his angels to serve and protect. So that when your eyes are closed, the eyes of the angels are open. And there are ways that they are protecting us that we will never know. What if they're here now? Is that weird for some of you? So this morning, what is the challenge for you? Man, dwell close to God so you can have confidence that he is guarding, he is commanding on your behalf. If there's any sin in your life that you're wrestling with, that you're dabbling in, man, it's hard to, to feel like there's protection over that sin, right? That's why there's no peace for you. So confess. He loves you. Listen, you have to know that he knows everything about you. He's not surprised by what you're dealing with. He's not surprised by the sin. He's not surprised by any of it. He loves you. And he sent his son for you, who defeated temptation, who died on the cross, and who trampled the serpent forever, so that in Jesus Christ we will have victory forever, forever. You think of that song, victory is mine. Victory is mine, victory is mine. I told Satan to get thee behind, cause victory today is mine. Where's David at? You know what I'm saying? You can have victory. Father, we thank you for your truth in scripture. That victory is ours. Victory is ours. God, I pray that whatever the enemy is doing in the lives of these people, we even pray this morning because your scripture says it. Over 300 times, angels minister. They serve, they protect, they come on your behalf. God, we... We won't pray to them, but we'll pray to you, asking you, even on the way out of this place, would you command your angels to guard your people? But the key is your people, those that have placed their faith in Jesus Christ can have confidence in the command. Those that have placed their faith in Jesus Christ can have confidence in the command. So Father, give us that confidence. Help us to break off the sin in our lives that's not pleasing to you. Help us to seek you and to serve you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, church, love y'all. We'll see you next week. God bless.